keep so hard to say goodbye to John C. Okay, now we are here with the man, the myth, Jacino. How are you doing, bro? Hello. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Oh, that's good, man. Not that's bad. good. Um, so, yeah, give us a brief rundown about yourself. Uh, I'm Jacino, Jamie. Uh, a lot of you may know me. Um, I am the TO for Super Smash Bros. Melee in Auckland, and I play Smash Melee and Smash Ultimate. Now, what game uh, would you choose as your top? So, would it be Ultimate or Melee or brawl melee. melee i will i will i will play that game until i die <laughs> and not to be sad but that is actually possible because i mean how many years you just like that game's still around you know it's got uh, support from the people exactly. the only thing that could go wrong is that every single we dies and every single crt dies but even then i think we're moving on to monitor melee soon as well so that's yeah. exciting does is is there a difference going from crts to actual like monitors definitely yeah. at the moment anyway there's um there's just a difference with how it's displayed on the screen and it makes the game feel really weird okay any lag i mean obviously is there any lag check difference or <laughs> not um Yes, there is there is lag difference in the way it's displayed. It it, it feels different to play and it looks different to yeah. play. Um, but there are mods out there that have just sort of recently come to the surface that fixes all that. So, sorry, a lot of the scene are starting to look at switching over just because it's so much easier. Yeah. Could you, since you are the very first Smash player we've had, could you kind of go over how unique your scene is because i think a lot of us mainstreamers like the street fighter Tekken players we don't really understand your side of the story so being a platform fighter which is the term for them uh it's a lot more based in movement and obviously the stages are a lot tend to be a lot larger than other fighting games and you know jumping plays a bigger role for example in a lot of in smash than a lot of other fighting games it's um very positional based and less less combo focused i yeah. would say um as for melee i think the combo system in that is one of the best in any fighting game ever uh, it's just so interactive in 99 percent of cases uh there's no waiting for someone's combo to just work on you 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 can actively try and escape every combo yeah. so yeah it's and obviously it's up to the player comboing you to react to that and follow you so i think it's just the speed of it and the creativity and movement and combos just makes it one of the best games of all time melee in particular is the best <laughs> game of all time well i mean some people i mean there are some people that have always debated the essence of a fighting game and if smash really is a fighting game because it has that whole party game aspect like how do you how do you talk to people who have that mentality that oh it's a it's a party game it's not serious i find often people that hold that sort of mindset are not very they've not really experienced much of it they've never played it at a competitive level they've maybe barely watched it um i think most people don't hold that mentality like almost all the people i talk to in the ftc they might joke around and troll me about it but i mean to anyone that's seen like either our top players or like even my friends just seeing me play there's no way that they can't realize that i take it very seriously as seriously as a fighting game and the mentality that goes into it is almost exactly mm. the same it, it is fair to mention that smash is a scene and like, smash is a scene it has a lot of younger players or players that are literally like they're yeah i'm just gonna say young yeah uh, i mean it's it's what happens when you have a game full of Mario characters, yeah. right? And animals and stuff. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, 
But at the same the same idea, would you say that Pokemon can't be a competitive game because children play that game? Like it's Yeah. You can have a game that is open to younger audiences and be competitive at the same time. And I think an issue with uh, reg traditional fighting games getting the sort of like older age groups is that they're a lot harder to play casually. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I've played Tekken and Street Fighter casually, um, but I don't think I don't think eight year old me would play Tekken casually. No, yeah. <laughs> Might have played Bloody Roar in the PS2 because it had the name Bloody in it, but not, not, not PS2, PS1. I think Bloody Roar is right. Yeah. So, the, but how did you how did you cross yeah. into the world of Smash? So I, everyone's seen the Wombo Combo video. Everyone in the world, I refuse to believe that no one's seen the Wombo Combo video. It is. I, I was just watching. League of Legends or something one day and I heard the Wombo Combo stuff and I wanted to find out where it was from. I saw that. I was like, I've heard of competitive Super Smash Bros. before. Um, that was about all I did. I, I watched something called the Smash documentary at that time. But this was... must be 2014. So it was just a year after it came out. It's one of the biggest things that have, has gotten like newer players into Super Smash Bros, at least Melee. Um, but I didn't really take care of, take notice about it, take notice of it after that until I went to Japan the next year for uh, a homestay with my school. Uh, and there I played Super Smash Bros. Brawl on the yep. Wii. And I had Brawl for the Wii when it came out, but this was in 2015 with... A Japanese kid that I could barely talk to. Um, so I was like, hey, Super Smash Bros. exists. And then I went and watched old competitive videos of it. Uh, and then when I came back to New Zealand, I figured that there wouldn't be anyone playing the game because it's so old. And I played a game called Rivals of Ether instead, which is another platform fighter. And I came in through the Oz Smash Discord because that's where Rivals of Ether is held on that. And then... I think Gbus, who's a, a Christchurch player, introduced me to the scene here, and I figured out people played melee, so I went to tournaments. Um, why melee though? Like, like what what was so special about melee as a game? Because I know you love it. Um... Well, I, I mean, as I explained earlier, it was very fast. It was way more to me way more interesting than smash 4 which came out in 2014 um that's in comparison quite a floaty game i i wouldn't say it's more straightforward but the mechanics themselves are more straightforward it, it's developed a very different meta game completely and how you play the game is it's it looks maybe similar to melee but it really doesn't play the same at all um so yeah, and Rivals of Ether is well was inspired heavily by Melee. So, mm. you know, it was just a game that I had played. I'd seen the game, and I wanted yeah. to play it. It was a scene, so I did. Um, well, you've got. I mean, you guys have got Smash Ultimate now. Um, how has that been? Like, how has that been from a sm like from the Melee's Melee fans' point of view, and also like Smash Four players, like. How, how how well does that game do in unifying because obviously those two scenes are quite it's hard to kind of mesh them together but what how does how good does ultimate do in terms of meshing those two groups together i would say it does i would say it does very well um i mean the game is still more like smash 4 than it is melee but it is enough of a step forward for it to just be way more interesting i think to melee players or at least the people that i've spoken to in particular not to mention the game itself is really fun so i think it was a combination of mega web ending just as ultimate came out so there was a, few, a bit less players from melee at the time melee was in a bit of a slump year i think in 2019 so you just 
go to their closest active game to that and it's ultimate and it's very fun so people have stuck around well can i ask a question how how does a game like melee have constant support and it's been out for a long time and this is a game that doesn't get any updates any alteration so how does a game like that from that period survive in the in the day of now it's just how i mean when you say it has support it has support from its fans it definitely doesn't have support yeah. from nintendo um <laughs> but that's a different conversation um it has people playing it still because it's just it's such a deep game and you can get infinitely better at it uh it's A lot of people sort of complain about it being, oh, you just see the same stages and the same characters over and over again. You re First of all, you really don't. And second of all, the characters can all be played so differently that, you know, you've never played a game of Melee where it's been the same as a another one. Yeah, It's always different. So people keep playing it. Mm. Not to mention it's really fun to practice, in my opinion, anyway. I could play the game by myself, and I do all the time. So it's fairly easy to to be interested in it, I yeah. think. And that's why it's stayed alive for so long. Another thing that I um, notice about the Smash scene is that you seem, what well, like, generally the Smash scene over here runs a lot of their own independent events. So you don't just have Rambats and you don't have Nationals. You have your own, like, exclusive events. Um, yeah, what are some of the events that you've been to and that the Smash guys have hosted? I think the only ones that happen are Seaside Smash. Yeah. So that'd be Auckland. That's the Auckland local. And then I think Wellington have their own tournament as well. And then there's Biggie. And Biggie is the Smash Major. Uh, currently it's just in... No, currently it's the only Smash Major. But I think... Oh, well. Auckland are going to run one at the end of the year. Oh, nice. Yeah, which has been spoken about, but I don't know how much information is out there, and I don't have much information about yeah. it. So, well, how many play? How many yeah. players signed up last year for Biggie? Uh, oh, that was a hundred and one, I think. Far out. So, I think that was New Zealand's largest fighting game tournament. I think at least in recent memory i don't think there's been any other bracket that has had over 100 players in it yeah obviously there's been tournaments with more than 100 players but not a single bracket but not not a single yeah. bracket yeah and how do those brackets usually turn out because you've got that amount of players does smash take a lot of time to get through <laughs> i think it has done in the past um but it is something that can be worked on. Um, uh, Smash majors overseas managed to do insanely large numbers in the time that a regular tournament would take. I could see it being fairly difficult alongside uh, other fighting games, just because you know there's just so much to fit into a day. You've you've run tournaments yourself; it, it can be quite stressful and. You know, games, at least for Melee, can range anywhere from, like, five minutes to 40 minutes, yeah. sometimes even longer. So it can be quite... I think it's just quite a daunting task to set up a tournament with so many variables. Yeah. Well, speaking of variables, the equipment itself can be a variable because it isn't easy to come by working reliable crts and i've been told that you're quite the the hunter in that regard yeah i've got one i got five at my house at the you're five Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but we are still planning to get rid of them at yeah. some point but uh we'll work on that because it's just uh, the thing is it's very difficult because if you're in my situation you've got five working monitors for your game if you're wanting to replace them all with like proper gaming monitors, that's a lot of money for one person yeah. to invest. I, 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 I would need time to save, and even then, would it be worth it? I think only because I love the game so much. If it, if I was doing it for a game that 
I didn't care about I wouldn't invest half as much money yeah. into it. But on top of that, what something we both experienced last year with Auckland's major, um, the equipment having to be tag tested. I think that was the first time in a what in a in actually ever that we've been hit with that kind of situation and CRTs like unfortunately do not make they it did not, the yeah they did not make the cut man quickly. and some people were furious oh it was a very complicated situation because we expected the equipment to be tagged beforehand and then it wasn't as you know and a lot of things were tagged the night of the tournament yeah. well the night before um and that's a fairly difficult situation to be in because when we got back the next day the person that was checking all the gear obviously just thought the crts were trash and didn't yeah. check them so you know we had to work around that mm. and i got luckily i had spare crts because there was one or two that were checked one of them passed the other one failed and i I think I drove back to one of the houses. I think I drove back to Cub T's place and picked up CRT. Because you're quite a faithful um, tournament attender, you know, coming from Tauranga to Auckland and even to Hamilton. So, yeah. Tell me about one time you've actually turned up and you've carried like an army of TVs with you. Like, what's the most you've actually brought to one of these things? Hmm. Um,. So I, th I think often I drive up and go and, well, I used to drive up and collect them. So I've carried about five or six, I think, is the most I've carried. Um, but I mean, the scene used to be a lot larger. So luckily, being the TO now, it's not as daunting with this, in terms of space that gets taken up from the CRTs, yeah. just because we don't need as many setups. Mm -hmm. And what about the um the units and what about the cons like what about the units themselves because like at least with the nintendo switch like you know it's 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 still fairly recent you know and you can kind of tend to it when yeah. problems happen but what but what happens when it's an outdated console system you know like when you play melee well i th if we were just using C uh game cubes it would be a problem but uh, instead, we use Wii's, and Wii's are obviously, everyone knows, one of the most popular consoles of all time. It might have been the most popular console. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, so they're everywhere. Uh, and basically what you do is you just mod the Wii. <laughs> so all the tournaments we use, they're just games are modded onto it, and we run them off. Were they that. pretty easy to get through tag testing as well, the Wii's? Yeah, the yeah. Wii's were fine. Oh, man. Yeah, because I think... Because they had a tagger for Auckland's Major. They did have a tagger come in like the day before. And I think they could have got it done on the day, but people would have had to have paid a lot extra per item. Yeah, it, it was like 20 it was, bucks. It, it was it, like if told. it wasn't a phone charger and it wasn't a laptop charger, everything got tested. Everything. Yeah. yeah. And that was, that was kind of stressful for me because like obviously you can't expect the tournament attendees to just like play that on on the spot especially because nets was quite an expensive tournament for mm. most people yeah i think it was like 70 bucks yeah um 20 bucks to get everything tested that would have been like i think i had four crts there and four wii's and then we needed like uh, no that must be it yeah so that would be what eight times 20 yeah 2160 roughly yeah so less than so yeah. under 200 i don't know why i'm no, not yeah. that, that's just too much for anyone to pay especially if you're a last minute sign up and and it's a side game yeah like mainly it's a side yeah. game but i mean we had plenty of people play i think we had some like 18 entrants or something yeah. like that and i got a stream up and running admittedly it could have been run better but it was done very last minute and on the day and it considering i thought it wouldn't work from the day starting and then i got kind of cut off for time because ultimate took longer than expected yeah. i'm very glad with how it turned well, out how, how is streaming in terms of um the smash scene like obviously if it's a game like mortal Kombat, street fighter you know obviously like we try to get the stream up but with smash it's a bit different do you guys try to get it going or do you just like oh if we can do it we can do it if not 
Ultimate's fine. Ultimate, we just, you know, it's the same as a, a streaming any other game. Um, for SSS, was a stream every every tournament. Uh, we had melee streams, obviously. Uh, but we've been moved off the stream setup for now uh, since I became TO, but I am working on getting another stream setup yeah. going. For melee, it used to be very difficult. Uh, a lot of the FGC tournaments really struggled with getting it running, but there's... Um, Oh, that's just because the like the capture card doesn't work properly with CRTs or something yeah. like that. What we do now is there's actually like a an app you can download because we use modded Wii's. You can download it onto the Wii, download the app onto your computer as well, and it mirrors the games. So if you play on the Wii, it shows up on the okay on the computer as well. So you just stream it as if you were like playing a PC right, game. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how was the stream set up for Seaside Smash? Were you involved in that at all? For Melee? For melee yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, and I will be, hopefully, next SSS. I'm going to go up there and try and get a stream yeah. working. But that will be on a laptop as opposed to the beefy PC that we normally use. So I'll need to how, see. How, how, beefy, how beefy is it? Like, Is it like a CRT? Like it's, it's a big thing that you got to take around? Uh, no, it's it's um, it's oh the PC itself is Alberto. That's double A. He's normally he's one of the main TOs in Auckland. Um, that's his PC, and I'm normally not there for it being set up, but it is a big yeah. PC. Um, well, could you ex could you maybe talk about your experience with um, like I just mentioned at Seaside Smash, you know, um, because like whenever these Smash guys do an event. Is there always any feelings of interpretation like, oh, you know, like, I don't want to get my hopes up, but then it turns out to be pretty good. And it's done pretty well because it's like it's in you've had at least like six or seven seaside smashes, maybe even more. I think I think we're at nine. nine. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> don't quote okay. me on it. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we're around nine. Um do you mean in terms of the quality of the tournament? Uh, Expecting it to be... Yeah, the tournament. quality of the tournament, um, what you got out of it as a player, uh, because it is really cool how you guys seem to really fuel events for your scene, you know. Well, it's one of the benefits of running a tournament that is mainly consisting of one or two games is they can fit a lot into one day. So we have doubles, uh, which in Auckland is fairly big at this point. You know, we have a lot of static teams... Um, it, get, it all gets streamed and then we move on to singles straight after doubles uh, anyone that gets eliminated within pools gets to play in a redemption bracket so they have one more they basically play triple elimination and they have their own little bracket at the a end. redemption bracket that sounds cool yeah it's it's sort of just like an amateur's bracket or something except when you lose and losers you just go into a single elimination bracket so that's okay. pretty fun I've luckily, being the god of the game that I am, I've never had to enter the bracket. But. <laughs> well, uh, who who are some of the gods that you've had to meet in bracket um, during these melee events? Like, who have you run into? No, oh, that 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 was ultimate in particular, and mainly just run right. melee <laughs> singles. Yeah. But uh, last last tournament, I ran into Aloof. You know, he's just he's pretty good at the game. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure he's won every melee tournament in the last three years. That he's really been pra anything that he's practiced for. In fact, a lot of the tournaments he hasn't practiced for, he's also so won. He's, he's he's been kind of underperforming recently. So he's like the Street Fighter I, version of Ghost Chips. Yeah. Like he's. I would I would definitely say he's more dominant than Ghost wow. Chips, <laughs> but <laughs> but at the same time, Ghost Chips is. Hmm. <laughs> I would say he was more dominant than those chips. I don't yeah. know about now, because Mr. R. Kelly's pretty yeah. good. Well, who who does um, Aloof use in um, in melee? Uh, he used to use Fox quite a bit. He used it at the last tournament. Um, other than that, he plays a lot of Mario. Mario, yeah. Yeah. Uh, at one of the tournaments he won, I'm pretty sure he played random and won. Played one of the recent ones. Just played... You just picked a random character and won the tournament. That's confidence, man. 
<laughs> so what do you prefer playing singles or doubles uh for melee singles but i mean there's not really been many doubles tournaments in a while i think the last one was war 2000 and, oh first one so 2018 oh okay yeah uh for ultimate i really love doubles yeah. but i'm learning to like singles more and more so it's about 50 50. i have a, a great teammate joe uh and we're working on getting better we've already been doing fairly well at tournaments but we could do we could do more so what is it about um because when you play you have a you have some kind of tagline jhn what what is that that's the johns that's our crew i say crew it's more more just like a bunch of friends and we hung out enough to consider ourselves a, a sort of group within the scene so I, I think i wasn't there for the origin of it i'm pretty sure they were just called the johns because everyone's name started with j and john is a name that starts with j so okay <laughs> yeah. all right I, I i was just curious what jhn was meaning yeah no, it was just the Johns. We are the Johns. It's it's nothing serious at all. It's literally just these are my friends that I hang out with and play yeah, with. Cool. So what you've got yourself, you've got um, what is it, Cup Tea and did Bosch Bosch Boshy's one of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite a long list. Okay, things like Joe. I've got Ignis. We've got Boshy. Johan. Yep. <laughs> Jock says his tag is. Uh, he plays Soul Calibur. Some people might know him. Um, Milky Cloud. Nobody knows who he is. Uh, oh. Cup tea, who's that? I don't even know. Oh, you're a brave man. Uh, some le some people might the FGC might know less. Uh, Snow, Beachnik, yep, yep. uh, Jamal. He's played some Soul Calibur as well. Uh, I think he's been playing it when we were at Rambats at the same time he was joining in. Um, so it's like your little. I, I better not be missing anyone. I yeah. better not be well, missing. <laughs> so so what? Do you, so do you guys um hang out? Do you guys hang out a lot outside of the game? Do you discuss tech? Uh, I mean, I obviously I hang out with Milky Cloud and Cub T basically every weekend because they house me every single time I go up mm -hmm. to Auckland. Oh, of course, SB Omega. SB <laughs> Omega. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's he's probably the best player we have. Um, very good enemy of mine. <laughs> so who's his character? <laughs> Who does he play? He, he plays Ness. Ness. Ah, yeah, from Mother or Earthbound, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Okay, so I'm so I'm guessing you all kind of fulfill your role in that group. I would just assume that Milky plays the Mother role. Um, Cup T plays the Yes Yes Queen <laughs> role. Uh, what role do you fulfill? the best player on the planet of course <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult uh, i don't know we just i mean jace uh sp omega only just got back from australia so he, last time he was here for sss and then we hung out at cub t's place and played a lot of smash um I don't know. I definitely play a sort of. I like to think that I play a sort of hype man esque kind of yeah. game. I I try and cheer on as many of my friends as I can, and I hope that they yeah, cheer man. me on mainly because I I play sick. No, of course, that, that you do, that you do, and I think we all do the same <laughs> for you. Well, you were um you were playing in um you were in America, and I think you were playing bonus stage. And I think you had your JHN crew shouting you on in the comments. In the, in the yeah, chat. there was a, there was a, a, yeah, that was I was playing a Bowser Ditto against someone. I think it was called Bonus Stage. Yeah, yeah. that was that was fun. It was close, but not close well, enough. Prior uh, to that, because you because it was in America, so yeah, you went to America. Was that solely for this tournament, or were you going to? No, I was going to Genesis, the big super major over there. Uh, it's one of the biggest tournaments of the year. Uh, I think there's that, the big house, and Smash and Splash was the previous one, but that's no longer a, a thing anymore, so it'll get fulfilled by something Does else. Does Genesis happen quite early in the year? 
Yeah, it happens in January every year. No, that that's quite an that's ah oh, that's just interesting time to 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 host the yeah early in the January. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, there is an off season. It's just very 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 short. It's not. Yeah, yeah, it's very short. I would say maybe just December. I don't think there's anything throughout December. There's stuff like there's regional tournaments through Christmas and things like that, but I don't think there's any major tournaments around that time. So did you um yeah, did you It's good timing for me though because I don't have to go to uni or work. Well, I do have to work, but I can take time yeah. off. So you already, you know, booked your leave, you had your finances sorted. Um did you end up treating yourself while you were there? Like, did you end up spending a lot more? Um, the worst cost that I had was mainly um, the travel agent I used just put me in the middle of nowhere. So I had to like Uber even just to go and get oh, food. Man. So that was a pain. Um, after the tournament, though, I was in San Francisco for just under a week and I loved it there. And I got a a really nice hotel for super cheap. I think it cost me like 300 bucks for the week, which, oh, 300 US, I guess it's a yeah. bit more. I don't know. But I mean, considering it was very last minute, I thought I would have housing, but I it kind of mm. fell through. <laughs> There's a habit of that <laughs> happening, but I, I, I think I sort myself out most of the time. Did you hit up um, friends or people you knew about? Oh, like I want to check out this, you know, like did you, who did you, did you hit up anyone to check out the smash scene or did you just somehow find them? Well, I use my friend Smoz mainly. Uh, he's an old school melee player. Uh, he knows a lot of people over there and recommended tournaments for me to go to. And he was extremely helpful through the whole process. And I met up with him over there. So it was cool to hang out. Did you have a lot of like overseas tournament experience prior to like attending bonus stage? Like, was that your first time? like seeing an international kind of tournament? No, I, being from Scotland, I travel quite a bit. So I went to, in 2017, no, 2018, I went to AIR. That was in the UK. That was the largest tournament in Europe ever. That was amazing. Um, and it was super cheap because the tournament itself was fairly easy. I just got a train from my brother's house in Glasgow down to Leicester and hung out at the tournament for four days or something like that. Uh, other than that, I've been to Australia plenty of times. My ex-girlfriend lived there, so I would visit and go to Smash tournaments at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and I've been to OHN twice. So. But that was your. Yeah, that's. But that Sydney. was your first um, American tournament, right? Yeah, that was the first time I've ever been in America. It was way better than I thought it would be. Did you underestimate, like, the experience? Or, like, were you... Did you kind of go in there with a certain mindset of how it would be like? I definitely went in there with a mindset of how it would be like. And I've heard not-so-flattering stories about people's trips to America before, but the people I met over there were insanely nice to me. And, it, I mean, I just want to go back. And I probably will at yeah. some point. So how did you do in um, bonus stage, like just meeting the American players? Were they quite curious about, you know, oh, you're from New Zealand or, you know, oh, you, you play melee. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think some people didn't expect there to be a scene so, in New Zealand. So, yeah, I might as well go through the whole trip. So the first one I went to Steelcraft, uh, Smash at Steelcraft. Uh, that was in Southern California near Long Beach, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and bunch of people there. That was before Je That was like the last tournament in SoCal before Genesis. So there was like plenty of people there. I did fairly well. I think I went two and two or three into or something like that. And I lost to Sock, who's an Australian player in the Lizards. That was fun. Um, but oh well. And then after that, I went to a, a, an Ultimate tournament and I got seventh there out of i think it was only 
16 or something like that so I only had to like win one or two games yes. um, then I got third at a local which I was really pleased about I, it wasn't a big local or anything but it was I think I went 5-2 and two or 6-2 and two or something like that um, yeah made an upset on the second seed and then lost him in losers unfortunately and then there was Genesis and I didn't have anything after that uh, oh no I did I had the uh, bonus stage one and that one I did way better than I expected to as yeah. well um, it was a very surreal experience because most of the time when I was going to these tournaments I didn't know anyone so you just like you talk to one guy and they suddenly become like the closest person you know within like a hundred miles yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Bowser player I played against was like super nice to me. I wish I could remember Magna his name. Magna DX, just... man. Ah, yeah, Magna DX. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure he told me his real name, but oh well. He's a super nice guy, and we had a great set. I think we both really enjoyed. Well, it, it was a it was a Bowser mirror match. Do you deal with Bowser? Do you deal with your own? Well, at the time, you were maining Bowser, but I know you've said you've switched to Cloud. But how did how do you? Do you cope with the mirror match well? It's... I think even in the set that you can see on, on the screen right now, it's very back and forth. Um, Bowser is a character some people consider very cheese, but it's kind of difficult for Bowser to cheese himself. Um, just because he's... It's just hitting each other really hard. Um, and it's very fundamentals based. I think overall record is pretty bad for me, but I've also beaten uh, Human Shu in a money match in the Bowser Dado, which uh, was one of the hypest sets I've ever played just because of how funny it was. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't say I struggle in it, but it's definitely not something that I try to go into, you know? Do you... I, I'd much rather play like Cloud or something yeah. against him. I mean, Bowser as a character, um, popularity-wise, strength-wise, um, what do you what what is the opinion on that? Uh, I think the general idea is he's mid to high tier. So in a game with seventy four characters or something, something insane like that, it's he's pretty good. He's very fast for his size and his weight. Um, yeah, and he hits very hard. It's, it's basically a gist of it. Not to mention he has that grab that you just saw on the screen. It was a it's his side beat, it's a command grab. He can do it in the air, which makes it... And it's really fast, so it's just one of the, in my opinion, best moves in the game. What about um any weaknesses? Like, is there a core weakness to the character? Mainly his weight and size. He gets comboed by everyone in the game forever and some characters edge guard him really well bowser himself edge guards bowser extremely well yeah. so with the set with against uh, magna dx yeah. did you guys um like obviously after this tournament you met and you became quite close did you hang out with him at all uh, quite well not close but did, did you no, hang out I'm with him th th like at all with the remainder of your trip no because i think that was the day before i left oh wow yeah, it was kind of a just let's go to a tournament because I had nothing to do in uh, in San Francisco. I was going to go to a melee tournament, but I I went out clothes shopping because I needed more clothes, and it just uh, time went by, and I was like, oh, I'm too tired to go. And then I wish I did go because I, a bunch of my friends went, and it would have been quite nice to hang out with them before yeah. I went. So then you come back to New Zealand. And then, you know, welcome back to our scene. Uh, is there anything yeah. that you saw the Americans do that you wish that we employed here for our tournaments? Just in terms of tournaments themselves? Yeah. Um, the, the only thing that really struck me was how often they run them. And they run them through the weeks. Like, they, you, you'll have a local on a Wednesday night after work. And people just go to it. And it doesn't even need to be large. It could be like 13 people or something like that. But 
obviously it's very difficult to do that here and even if it did happen here i couldn't attend them because you know it's a three-hour drive up to auckland mm. so i don't yeah i i think they also hosted a lot more like casual get-togethers as groups and like post about it and you know have people come over and things like that a lot more just interaction i think there's quite a bit of interaction in the uh in the FGC scene, admittedly. I think in terms of like going to people's houses, it happens quite often. I know Soul Calibur go over to uh, Milky Clouds quite often and play. Uh, even when I'm going up, I play a lot with Cub T and the rest of the Johns that come over. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that might be happening that I'm not seeing, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen as nearly as much as the US does. Yeah. I just... I feel like, you know, we, I mean, it's good that we have our close, like, community and friends, but then it can become a niche that's like, we'll only really play that game with these select players. We don't really try to. Yeah. I mean. But, I mean, that that was something that they did over there is they invited people to just, like, house tournaments and things like that. It was just literally, they put it on the Facebook group and there was enough people on the Facebook group that people would just yeah. show up. So, are you are you having like a character crisis or something? Like, why did you go from Bowser to Cloud? Like, I'm I'm I was surprised because I because I hate losing with Bowser. <laughs> I the character itself, I will probably always have a Bowser. He's a fairly simple character. I can just pick him up when I'm in a uh, when I need a clutch moment. I had to use him in my last bracket, um, just because it it got way too close for me. And I didn't feel like I could do it with Cloud. Um, but Cloud is... He has a lot of what Bowser doesn't. He has more range. Um, he has a big disjointed sword instead of his instead of Bowser's claw. Because you can hit Bowser's claw, you can't hit Cloud's yeah. sword. Um, he's... I don't know. It's just... I vibed very well with the character when I picked him up and he kind of fit the matchups that I hated to play against and I wasn't enjoying losing with Bowser so I, when I was playing Cloud I was having yeah. more fun well what are the matchups that you're struggling with this is an ultimate of course like what matchups do you really struggle with I, I was struggling with Villager for a bit uh, I think I was doing okay against Blaz, who is the villager main to play against um, in Hamilton. Uh, I would hate playing against characters like Inkling, for example. Inkling is Bowser. It's not even a bad matchup for Bowser, but uh, there's so much waiting. Game & Watch, Lucina, sorty characters that kind of just zone you out. Um, th Bowser doesn't deal with zoning very well because he's a big character quite laggy and like no effective projectiles to zone back so when i started playing cloud it was like hey you're trying to like outspace me but i have a huge sword let me hit you in the face <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i hear you um yeah I, I think i think i came to the conclusion that i was going to switch at genesis because i played against a gaming watch player over there and a lucina player and they just kept me in the corner and it was so simple for them uh, i admittedly there was plenty that i was doing wrong but it was just not the way i wanted to play the yeah. game um who who are the other cloud players or cloud mains in the country that you know of there's no cloud mains there's cloud secondaries uh upright man is the first one i would mention uh, i've actually not played against this cloud but from what I've heard, he's pretty good with him, and he's a super nice human being. So, hopefully, I beat him with Cloud, and I can call myself the yeah. best Cloud. I think there's, I think that's just it. I, I I can't think of many other people. There's some people that pick him up and play him on the side. I know Fank played him at the last time met, but I wouldn't say that Cloud is one of Fank's main characters. Okay. Um, are there any characters that? Um, that just kind of pour salt on everyone else. It's is there a character that when they come on the screen, people just do not support or love that character whatsoever? 
I would say Bowser, oh, but in my really, experience, <laughs> yeah, in my experience, people love my Bowser. <laughs> so I don't know. It's kind of fifty-fifty. The thing with Bowser is he's just, you know, he's a big, heavy guy, so he's hard to like get the finishing kill on. He has this weird armor mechanic that people just forget about sometimes. Just it's a knowledge thing. You need to know that you can't hit this character with some super weak moves because it won't do anything to him. And it's just, you have to always be scared of his grab and his huge hitboxes. So people just don't like playing against him. Yeah. Any, um... Also, he's very easy, so it's kind of, you know... Like, it's, like, there's... You play against a very easy character, and you're like, oh, this character's half as much as yeah. losing. Okay. Uh, Game & Watch is quite similar in that aspect. Game & Watch, I think, gets a bad knack because it's... It tends to be not very exciting to watch and not very exciting to play against. Yeah. So, as Cloud, I think yeah. that's fine though. So, but you're but just overall with Ultimate, you're quite happy with the game, the system. Are there any character? Is there any characters that were in previous Smash games that you wish had made it into the cut? <laughs> so the big thing with uh, Ultimate is there was an everyone is here advert and it was that every single smash character is in the game and more so there's no characters that are missing okay i don't know that shit yeah no it's 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 a great idea and other fighting games should do it i think about how cool yeah. that would be a tekken game that has every character in it i know you'd have a lot of like characters that are basically the yeah. same but you know it'd still be fun imagine just being able to play bruce yeah. You did Bruce versus oh, Josie. No one wants to see that. No one wants to see double capos. No one wants to see Law versus the Sun. None of that. We had we we nah, yeah. we want to see. No, no. We, we had take two. We are we are past that point. <sighs> but with um with well, you was, you talk about the roster with Ultimate. Like the Pokemon, th like the Pokemon trainer, because what was the deal with the Pokemon trainer? They they're not. The, the Pokemon, like Charizard, used to be single in the previous game. Yeah, Smash I remember World. that. I remember that. Smash. I remember Charizard was a single character, but now he's a part of the three Pokemon team for Pokemon Trainer. Yeah. Which... It's because he was originally part of a team. Uh, in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, that's how the character yeah. worked. And then when it moved to Smash 4, they only made it Charizard. So they removed two of the characters and just gave him a different move instead of being able to change yeah. between them. Is there... But yeah, so it's just been reverted. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so, what do you expect from Smash Ultimate um, for this year? I'm really looking forward to the Auckland Major, Untitled. I, I don't know much about it, but it's going to give me a, a chance to... I mean, Auckland's about as local as I can get. I'm going to be running melee there, and I just want to be able to do well in ultimate and have melee running on the side. Well, not on the side. It will be running properly. But I don't know, I'm very excited just for the new aspects for me to kind of balance TOing and getting good at ultimate. Yeah, I just... It is a juggle act, and I can definitely speak on that, is like, you want to do, your good, you want to do a good job as a TO, and then you've got your skill as a player you know you've got a reputation to uphold yeah um have you are there any commentators that you look up to for uh for guidance or for inspiration in terms of my gameplay or in terms of oh, in, like in terms of running tournament. a tournament like any commentators or tos that you kind of take inspiration from hmm. um Within the Smash scene, probably Alberto. Alberto is has very consistently run his tournaments without really complaining. He's run them very well, in my opinion. And as far as I could tell, he's very dedicated with it and still has time on the side to play his games. And, you know, he's very good at what he does. So, him, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of tios outside of um, not really i've only recently just picked up toing um just at the start of no end of last year i started i think 
Um, I just have lots of ideas that I would like to see come through. Um, I am starting to have a prize pool, which is currently coming out of pocket, which is a bit of a pain, but we'll work on that uh, for melee at Seaside Smash. I want to get the stream working. I want to get like small pieces of content for the for each tournament, like a placard that has the you know winners and what characters they were playing, yeah. things like that. You know, just something that makes it a bit more official because I think that is at least in terms of how to get people interested into playing the game again, if you can create a sort of professional atmosphere, people want to compete in it. Yeah, that's a fair call. And, yeah, at the moment, it's just a bit of a... It's just setups at the side of the tournament that people will go and play on, and I'll run a bracket. But I do just want to grow the scene again. It's I can play the game by myself, but I'd rather play with yeah. other people. <laughs> well, you've chosen the right... Uh the right path in terms of being a TO because you are a very uh, you are a very opinionated individual on Twitter and you're very willing to challenge uh, the views and opinions of your other Smash players uh, you know despite them putting in their best effort but I mean it's good it's good to actually be that person that says hey look this things can be better or it wasn't run good let me help you with this yeah I mean I've definitely had some questionable opinions in the past or not express my opinions well enough to be taken properly but I I, I don't reject, regret a single thing I've said about any tournament and I think it's just very typical of my personality for that to be the case yeah. um, I'd like to think I'm at least at least very honest yeah. um, are there any players that you like in terms of TOing, are there any players in the scene that you really feel like you can kind of count on for support? Like you, you've mentioned some of them, but I just mean in terms of the support, because it's like you said, juggling work and then also being a player, being a TO. Well, I mean, at the tournaments that he's been at, Cookbook has been extremely helpful. Um, basically, all of the Smash scene for Melee has tried to help me if they're there whether it's setting up a stream or just plugging in all the uh, all the equipment. Mook helped me at the last one, and his friends, uh, K-Dog, uh, Espy, and Blaz helped me. All these people are from Hamilton. But uh, it, it's very... The scene itself, the people that play the game love the game, and they try and help as much mm. as they can. Honestly, I probably couldn't have... I couldn't have more access to volunteers. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I'm thankful for that. And what's the um, story on eSports and Smash? Because do we have a sponsor, New Zealand? I know you've got uh, Red Expansion, but yeah. is there anyone else? Um, in New Zealand? No. Oh. Oh, no, I guess you have AMG, Blaz is AMG, but it's, I don't think you get anything from that sponsorship. It's just a tag. Yeah. Can it, um, is, is, is that quite, um, is that quite common in this, like for Smash, like it's just a tag for eSports Smash? Like, yeah, it's kind of. I, I don't know the specific aspects of the deal. It's just something that exists. As far as I know, there's no benefit to being sponsored by some of yeah. these companies. There's also um, that New Zealand player who's in Australia now. Is his name... It's Spud. 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 Yeah, yeah, Spud. Pota yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of a potato. Spud, yeah. yeah. Have you ever yeah. um, have you ever run into him or have you ever had any exchanges with him? Oh, I mean, uh, we were in the US together. Uh, I see him at every BAM, and yeah, he's he's a nice guy. I speak to him when I see him at tournaments. I've never really gone out of my way to, to you know, be friends with him or yeah. anything. He's a nice enough yeah. person. Um, and he likes New Zealand, so that's yeah. what matters. He hasn't betrayed us fully, right? No, he he still tries to rep the New Zealand flag, and he tells people he's from. Yeah, 
even though he's probably more indicative of the Australian scene at the moment. Do you ever feel like you see yourself, do you ever feel like moving over to Australia or going back? I had in the past when my ex was living there and I completely just expected to move over there. In fact, I'm probably be living there now. Um, but honestly, if I were to move for Smash, it would be to the US. Just the ability to go to tournaments so easily is more than um, if if I was going for Smash, I would just go there. I could travel anywhere. I could play every day if I wanted to. Okay. What um? Tell me what. Tell me what um. If I if I was to begin playing Smash, melee, and I had to go to you and say, "Hey, I want to learn this game. Give me a character. What character would you suggest and why?" What character would yeah. I suggest? And, the, and don't think about me as a person. This is just you literally thinking. Okay, okay. he's fresh. If, if, I, if I were to, if I were to, if I were to start the game from the start, and just get fundamentally good as quickly as possible, I would probably pick Sheik. Sheik. She has yeah. She has fairly simple character. No, it's fairly simple combos. Uh, fairly straightforward neutral, and there's enough exploration there for you to like practice obscure tech or whatever if you really wanted to and she's not way too difficult but you can go that that way if you wanted to okay. yeah and she she exposes some very fundamental flaws that some characters have very well so i don't think it'd be that difficult to do well with her as well as just learn the game with her yeah okay yeah in fact, I did it myself. <laughs> I um because I use box now. I use this thing right here. It's beautiful. I love my box. Yeah, I saw that photo on your Twitter, and I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, I use that for melee. Um, and when I was waiting for that, I was like, okay, I don't want to keep using my GameCube controller because it's hurting my hands with Fox, and I kind of want to just like. You know, if there's any opportunity to play a different character, it's now. So I went to Red Zone Rumble and played Sheik. Yeah. And I didn't do particularly well in terms of placings, but considering I'd only been playing this new character for about a month, I thought I did yeah. pretty well. Well, you jump between that and an arcade stick and the GameCube controller. Um, do, you, do you actually change depending on character, or do you just go with how you feel depending on character like within the games no i stick to one controller per game i uh, it's just something i've done when i play rivals of ether i play in a xbox controller i've got there as well okay. yeah it's just something that i i think the way i play i play quite heavily onto my muscle memory with my hands uh, especially for melee uh it's sort of, if I start using that, using my box for other games, I start trying to like L cancel, for example, as a, t a technique in melee to cancel lag. And I keep trying to do that in all my other games, even if there's nothing in it. So <laughs> I don't really want to mess up my muscle memory. Do you feel like your muscle memory is so in tune to Bowser that, like, do you feel that way with Cloud, or is there more time that needs to be invested? I, the more I play Cloud, the more he feels like a main. He definitely feels like a main at the moment, though. Um, it's just because I feel like Cloud's a lot faster with your hands. Bowser is very simple, um, and it just the characters' play style is different enough for me to be able to switch between them without, you know, doing the doing the wrong thing generally. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. It's I, I've swapped through the characters fairly simply. I, I Especially if it's Cloud to Bowser, because it's just slowing yourself down as opposed to speeding yourself up, which I, in my opinion is harder. Because obviously you know that like there are players who will main a particular character and not touch anyone else. But obviously it's not, you know, like obviously players do that in Smash quite a lot. You know, they'll kind of change their mains and stuff and it's not really a big deficit i i suppose um 
but yeah i've got this match here where you're playing i'm so chove at seaside smash number six yep. and this is you actually using cloud because it was really hard to find one with you not using bowser <laughs> yeah this, this was my first tournament using cloud so i was pretty pleased with it uh this this set itself was fairly close i went down to last stock but i didn't get a hit on the last stock i think but i mean it was better than i expected yep. to do i think this is my second set with cloud and this is at the yes. venue grid is it just called grid grid slash it's called grid akl grd akl because yeah. that's that's one thing i kept hearing was that the venue was quite large like it was really good yeah, I mean, it's uh, uh, if there'll be a couple of the FTC people that went there for the Grand Blue Bracket that happened at the last SSS, um, I'm sure they'd be able to tell you it's larger than some rooms we've had for majors. So, so, yeah. so how many people did you actually have at this at this Seaside Smash? The last one, um, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was just over fifty. Oh shit! Okay. Which is, in my opinion, very good for a, a local. You know, it's. Yeah. I think I think I'm pretty sure the US get about that for most of their locals as well. Like the one I went to in the bonus stage one, I think that had sixty people on it. I think. No, I think it might have had forty five or something like that. So it was even less. But that's like you know if new zealand's raking in that amount and i notice this while over there i think the more players you have these you know the better people get um yeah i i really didn't think the us were that much better than us which is promising like the difference in skill isn't actually that great at all not not as big as it is for melee yeah anyway well let's let's say yeah. if you couldn't use cloud if you had to choose someone else like who would would you you mentioned Sheik in terms of picking up for simplicity. Would you say Sheik? Uh, that, that, that was for Melee. Um, for this... This game is very... Because all the characters have such different playstyles, um, and there's a lot less of a sort of defined, like, fundamental set of skills, you really just have to play who you enjoy. Yeah. Um, I would maybe play ZSS, Zero Suit Samus. So... That would be interesting. Okay. Other than that, I'd probably put, just play Bowser. Yeah. I quite like Mario too. Is there any is there any no. event that you haven't been to that you want to go to this year? Uh, I'm going to Phantom in uh, Sydney uh, in two weeks. No, just over a week now. Yeah. So watch me there anyone from the jhn crew uh accompanying you no it's just a loaf just a loaf of me will be oh, there yeah. yeah it was um the last one that ran because last year was the first year it ran it looked very exciting a bunch of international players went over uh from the us and we got to see people like spud versus professor pro and uh, no, 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 it wasn't Spud versus Professor Pro. It was Spud versus IBDW, who is a top ten player in the world. Yeah, that was very entertaining to watch. Yeah, so um, this year, I know there's a the best Mario in the world is going Dark Wizzy. He's going to play Smash Ultimate at Phantom. I'm quite excited for that. I saw him at Genesis. It was very fun. When you meet or when you are near these top level players, like obviously Street Fighter Tekken, like, you know, when we see these legends, we just kind of, we try to act cool and stuff. Is is there a certain meta when meeting the, the top players in Smash? Like, do you have to kind of earn respect to like be able to talk to them or what? I think for some people, yes. But there's also the other aspects where some not raking in the money or anything like that. it's uh they're much more down to earth than let's say the there's some people that have grown into the game quite recently that the all they know is esports 
but a lot of the very top players in the Smash games at the moment have played since basically they were underground tournaments. So they're all very down to earth. And that's been my experience so far, is most of them are extremely easy to talk to. Okay. Like, I, I know there's a couple of players that, like, even... I think Mewtwo King is friends with a couple of people from New Zealand on Facebook. Mm. <laughs> and he's at one point, was the best player in the world. Has any big Smash players ever come to New Zealand? I don't think so. Um, yeah, uh, we had Mojo Monkey, who isn't like a, you know, he's not a top 100 player or anything, but him and uh, Spud were here at the same time. That was a very interesting timeline. I wasn't in the game, at the, I wasn't playing at the time, but you can go back and watch the VODs of it. It was very different. Yeah. <laughs> um. There's been people that have expressed interest in coming over. I know Leon, uh, the Bowser player, one of the the best Bowser player in the world, went to Australia, and he said he wanted to come to New Zealand, but he didn't. So uh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Yeah. There was a New York Captain Falcon from the melee scene that went over to Australia recently. His tag's Jojo. He's a super cool guy. Obviously, never came to New Zealand. That's one of the issues. Is but. New Zealand's such a small scene. If you really want to meet some of these top players, you just need to go to Australia just, at the same you time. You just need to make that jump. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, luckily, it's not that bad of a jump, but it could it could be way easier. Is there okay? Well, getting near the end, but ha, are there two players that you've never seen face each other before that you would absolutely just love to see? In New Zealand? Um, international. International. I'll pick one from both games. Why not? Um, for Ultimate, I'm going to pick a, a New Zealand one anyway. It's going to be Aloof versus Dark Wizzy because I feel like watching a Mario ditto between the best Mario in the world and the best Mario in New Zealand would be either hilarious or extremely entertaining now, i'm gonna sound silly asking this because i just simply don't know but how 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 good is this dark wizzy uh he made top eight at uh, top five at genesis and that had over i mean that had basically most of the top 10 in attendance i'm pretty sure and i would put him in I think he's ranked 15th or something in the world, maybe 20th. Uh, he's extremely good. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to put it. He's had some extremely good wins. He almost beat Esam, who's one of the best players in the world. Uh, in fact, that set him, it came down to him accidentally self-destructing three times in a row and losing a game. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He, he struggles a bit from uh, nerves from the looks of it. I, I'm pretty sure... I was sitting and watching Top 8 with one of my friends, um, and we could see him playing, and he was our favorite player, so it was quite good watching him. But you could tell how emotionally invested he was in the game. After he uh, self-destructed three times and was going into the last game and was throwing away the last lead, and we could tell... We were pretty sure he was crying because you could see oh, tears going down his face. It was oh. And he's only like nineteen, so yeah. you know he's just a kid. It's it's just so crazy. Like the average age of a gamer is competitive gamer is thirty five, and you've got people playing Smash for just under twenty. Oh, yes. I mean, it happens in in lots yeah. of games. Right? Like look at look at League of Legends. You have like sixteen year olds in that game. That insane. I think Faker when he started playing competitively was sixteen, although. Yeah, I think there was age restrictions mm. with the LCK and things. Well, actually, like that. speaking of which, because you mentioned it, obviously in the fighting game scene, there's little communities like some of us might play a certain game. Do you are you at all into League of Legends or TFT or anything like that? I have an insane amount of hours on League of Legends. I, I've stopped playing it as much recently. I was never really good at it. The best I got was Plat. No, not Plat One. Was Gold One. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. 
Um, I played it a lot with my friends from high school, and I have a few thousand hours in it. Uh, I play RuneScape oh, still. Okay. Both of them. Big fan of RuneScape. Final Fantasy fourteen. I've been playing that. Uh, yeah. What else? I, I've always been interested in CSGO and things like that, but I've never yeah. played it. Well, I've played it, but I've never really gotten into it. Yeah, I'm actually... I'm, I'm always taken by the commentary of CSGO. Like, they those commentators really do work. Um, but yeah, CSGO is, is yeah, it's a great game to watch. Um, yeah. No, some of the commentary on these games is, like, immaculate. Uh, Monte Cristo is one of my favorite casters of all time. Just... I think he is one of those very honest people and he will say it as it is when he sees the game. Like if someone does something stupid, he'll call him yeah. out for it. And I think that's great when commentators do that. So who is your fighting game waifu, Justina? My fighting game waifu? Mm-hmm. Huh. That's... Let me think about that one. We're talking about just... No, it would have to be just Smash because it would be someone in Smash. Hmm. I think I think it'd be Samus even if it wasn't Smash. Samus is my yeah. wife. Yeah, I play that. Sa I when I first played, I mainly Samus was my main. Um, I've really enjoyed the two D Metroid games. All of them are just excellent games, and I can't wait for the. I I was never a huge fan of Prime, but I Don't can't worry. wait for the new. Yeah, Prime you weren't the only one, man. Uh, well, thanks again, Jacino, for your time and for your stories. Is there any yeah. last words? Yeah, I love the Johns. I uh, love my friends. Play some for Smash Brothers Melee because it's my favorite game of all time and I really want more people to play. Um, what else? Uh, fuck Wellington. But in, a, in, in, a, in a lovely way, I love Wellington, but god i can't wait to beat you guys <laughs> Biggie, it's gonna be great <laughs> oh god uh go to war and go to untitled uh smash major in auckland yeah and come to sss okay and with that yeah. i will end it here thanks again Justino, and thanks yeah, a lot we will see you guys again another time <laughs>